What's up everybody, Rob from FLX Bike. I'm here with the Babymaker Pro. I wanted to show you how one of the pieces of this bike gets made. The last time I showed you that was for the battery itself. This time we're gonna take a look at how the brushless hub motor for this bike is built. A lot goes into it, by the way. If you enjoy these videos, please hit that subscribe button. We'll be able to make more for you. So come with me, let's check out the factory. All right, here we are inside the motor factory and we're kind of picking up halfway through the assembly process. Maybe later when we get some more time, we'll be able to go back and get you the actual motor core being built and each individual component. There's so much that goes into it, but let's show you what we can today. So here the technician is taking the motor core and press fitting that onto the gear assembly. Next, a bearing is press fit onto the motor assembly and some insulation is applied outside of the motor core wires themselves, which themselves are insulated by the way, so just an extra level of protection. Next, that motor moves along and our tech here adds some sealing grease, the bolts to hold the housing together and press fits that all together before the bolts are tightened. At the next point, the bolts are tightened here on the internal motor assembly. Finally, at this stage, one pound to make sure everything is securely in there and the wires are tested for continuity on the end of that motor. Moving on, this is a very interesting stage. It looks small, but the small green circuit board here is a super critical part of the motor. That is the hall sensor. And what that does is it senses exactly where the motor is in its rotation. Because it's a digital controller, a digital motor, it's actually sensing where it is and calculating out exactly what polarity of electricity needs to be applied to it, what magnitude and polarity of electricity needs to go through that motor to keep it spinning at its highest efficiency. So little piece, big job here. With the hall sensor in place, electricity is applied to the motor. It spins up and the hall sensor is used to sense how many RPMs are going through that. So we're just checking, make sure it functions it passes the test and moves on. Moving on, if you look on the other side of this motor housing, we've got some new pieces there. Those are the planetary gears. And what that is for is a reduction. If you saw in the last clip, the motor was spinning at over 3000 RPM, which is a healthy RPM for motors of this size, but way too fast for a bicycle to use. So to get more torque, more low end power out of it and spin at a reasonable rate, those gears are installed. And right here, he's just putting a plate on there with the other side of the axle as well. And the motor will spin, it will get reduced through those gears. And the end result is a motor that spins much slower, but with much more power, ideal for a bicycle. Same thing on the other side of this motor, the other side of the axle is installed to the other side of the internal motor housing. Of course, some Loctite on the bolts there, the screws to make sure that they stay fit and snug. And finally, checking the end of that motor wire again for continuity, make sure all the wires are in place how they should be. Next, this is a big piece here. If you look at the black piece down there, we've got some bearings in it. You'll see teeth on the inside. We apply grease to that, and that's going to sit just outside of the top level of planetary gears, and the gears will spin inside that to make the outer housing rotate with the bicycle wheel. Here the other side of the outer motor housing is installed and just tapped in to make sure everything lines up appropriately. Next, some weatherproofing gaskets are installed on either side of the axle to reduce the chance of any moisture or dust, dirt getting inside the motor. As far as building the motor goes, that's pretty much it, but there's still some very important steps testing here. We've put the motor on a little dyno right there and it's cool, you can see how the electricity goes from positive to negative, it's a digital motor. So it does oscillate between positive and negative. If you take a look at the computer here, you'll see that we are testing with the dyno for max power, torque, input voltage, output voltage, efficiency, all those specs. If it is not up to the spec laid out, that motor will not be used. After testing, that motor is ready. So the final touches are put on it. Some bolts are installed in the outer motor housing to keep everything together with some very strong red Loctite. The motors are cleaned up and prepared for shipping. The motors are packaged six to a box and sent onto our assembly factory. All right, guys, that's it for today's production update. If you enjoyed seeing these behind the scenes videos in the factory, please take one second, hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and stay tuned for the next update. We'll see you later.